This is Realty Talk with Ellie and Galen. Welcome to Episode 9 of Realty Talk with Ellie and Galen. Uh, we are back for another week. Episode 9, we're doing really good about staying consistent. And um, we, this is kind of how we roll. I don't know if anybody can hear the train going in the background. Part of the, the charm of the station, but we didn't want to waste time because we're on a time crunch. So we just said we're just going to roll right through the train. So that's a little background music for you all um, listening on the airwaves. So, Ellie, um, two things we want to talk about. We'll talk about the, the one you just brought up. We'll talk about that first. So what, what was the topic that you had just mentioned? Um, oh, boy. Putting her on the spot here. People who like to talk a lot to, beyond the point of purpose, I guess. Okay. How to deal with that. So you had that today. You're yeah. talking to a potential client. That kept you on the phone probably for 15, 20 minutes, gave you the run around. Pro- probably more. Yeah. Just telling me the whole life story. And, okay. Yeah. So how'd you deal with that? Um, I just told them that I had to be here and uh, left. <laughs> okay. All right. So, 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 uh, <laughs> that's, that's fine. Um, so how I usually approach that. So there's different, we kind of talked about again, the, 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 the fun part about this is that Ellie's a brand new agent. I've been doing this for a while. So how I would have responded back in, when you were there would be the same thing. Um, probably would have just let them talk and, and you know try to try to, even though it's painful, go along with it. Now, yeah. what do I do now? I definitely am usually doing other stuff while they're talking, yeah. depending where I am. So if I'm at the office, I'm literally doing work and stuff as they're just kind of talking on and on. But also... I think that's important for, for people. And as you get busier, you'll notice this is that time is way more valuable than anything. So yep. I can't, as much as I'd love to talk to you for 15, 20 minutes on the phone, it's not a good use of my time during the day. So I'm usually quicker to get people off the phone. Not, not rudely, but I yeah. do, you do have to end the conversation. Yeah. The other thing that I kind of wanted to touch on, and I don't know, this person could be super serious and want to buy, but there's times where people call you and I think you had mentioned they give you the old... Well, I've been looking for a couple of years. Okay. So where does that fall in line with somebody that is actually looking to, to now do I discount them? No, I, I'll still work with them, but you got to be able to qualify them a little bit and say, mm-hmm. okay, you've been, you've been looking at homes, um, for a couple of years. Like what, what's your experience? What have you been finding? Well, cause usually what happens if somebody has been looking that long, they're probably somebody that wants a, a good deal. Yeah. Wants a fixer upper, wants to flip, wants all these little buzzword terms and they're looking at a house that's what what's your budget? I'm just gonna say fifty thousand or under. Okay, cool. What are you, you what are you trying to get out of that? Well, they want a house that's probably worth hundred to hundred and fifty for fifty thousand. Yep. Not gonna happen. It's not out there. No if it was out there, you would be up against a whole army of people trying to make an offer. So you gotta always dis you always gotta kind of um, this is something that I found out very early because you don't want to waste your time is to actually see, are they, one, are they qualified? Are you buying cash? Or are you going financing? If you're going financing, have you talked to a bank? Okay, cool. You're doing a USDA loan at $50,000. Not going to happen. Yep. Basically meaning that it's not going to pass a USDA appraisal. There's more criteria. There's more guidelines that have to be met than versus a traditional conventional uh, mortgage. Um, so you always want to try to get that out of them mm-hmm. um, in, in the sense of are they actually serious now if they're just sitting there and they're looking for that diamond in the rough that's fine you can do that I do not want to be a part of that it, not not in a bad way I just don't have the time and yeah. I have other people I have to make a living I can't sit sit here and just like run around on a scavenger hunt with you trying to find this home that I know the odds of you finding especially with their kind of standards are probably you know minimal yeah, yeah. Pro- probably never going to happen yeah. so I think the biggest thing is not necessarily someone that talks. I've had great clients that are talkers, but um, and some of the most friendly people are the ones that will talk to you forever. Yeah, they're the best. <laughs> but but the the thing is, you got to find where it becomes friendly to where is, are they actually just sucking time out of your day. And there's a point where you really do have to just say, hey, listen, that. Then sometimes I just I won't pursue it. Where I'll be like, yeah, that's kind of hard to find under fifty. I mean, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Hope you find something. You know, if you ever have questions, you can certainly reach out. But um, it's, it's probably not going to happen yeah. or it's a very slim chance. I'd never set an expectation that I'm going to call back. I never schedule them to call back. Those are just people that you talk to once and usually you never hear from them again, but you got to know when kind of cut them loose. Now yeah. it's different. Obviously if this is your first, you know, few clients that you're dealing with, 
you don't want to really discount anybody. Obviously, if they can't purchase a home, then yes, discount. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the only thing that you can really – that will really limit and there's no reason – to go around showing people homes that have no intention to buy or, or financially can't purchase. Yeah. Um, but if there's someone that can, they're, they're qualified, they have the money to purchase, um, they are serious about at some point in time buying a home, but maybe not right off, you can still you know, be in contact. Their motivation is going to change in time. Yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily you know, completely discount them early, especially if you don't have – like we talked about the last podcast, if you, you have a lot of time but don't have a lot of clients, then you you can't be choosy. Yeah. I'm just – and I'll be honest. I'm probably in my second year, first – I even kind of argue first to second year where I'm starting to just – now that we have a little bit more of a team here, I'm giving other agents stuff because I can't do it all. Like I, yeah. I'm finding that I'm just stretching myself too thin on certain deals and I would love to help everybody but I'm I'm really limited and I'm – I've gotten to the point now where I am being choosy, but this is and not all the time. I mean, I'm talking like 10 to 20% of the time I might pick and choose who I want to work with. Most of the time I will work with you obviously because yeah. how I make a living. Um, but again, it's my time. Like, is it my time is not best spent and it could be something like I could do an extra deal and help you out, but what's the, what am I actually making on that deal? And I'm not a very money motivated person, but I also have to be smart about it. If I'm making, 800 bucks on a low end deal to be honest i'm better off doing marketing i'm better off going to different events i'm better yeah. off like i'm there's better roi positive things for me than going around trying to find these kind of hard to find homes or, or deals that i know will i'll be doing five times the effort for a fifth of the reward kind yeah. of thing so that's just i gotta be at that point i gotta make a, um, a strategic business decision um but usually, like I said, as a newer agent, I may give them to you. And I mean, are they the best clients? No. But when you don't have clients, some some clients are better than no clients. Yeah, you know? something to do. So, and if anything, you get you learn stuff. And there's stuff that I've done in my career that I'm not proud of from kind of a lack of knowledge standpoint. We've talked about like running out to show a house for somebody 40 minutes away that I didn't know if they were qualified or what, and they looked at it, and that was it. Yeah. Like. I would not have – back then it didn't really matter. I mean it was that or I just sat around and did nothing you know, as the alternative. So it probably wasn't a big deal. Today, today there's no way in heck I'm going out to waste my time you know, for even an hour to go show a property that I know the person can't afford. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's certain things you, but we talked about time wasters. I, wouldn't, I don't know if they're necessary. They're time – there's talkers that you want – you just they're sucking your time of the day. But yeah. they're, they're, they will at some point purchase. But there's also the ones that would just give you the runaround or they start talking and you just know they're not in a financial position to purchase. Yeah. I, I, unfortunately, I just my, – my time is valuable and I can't – you know, I look at it. It's either taking time away from work or it's taking time away from my family or taking time away from something else where I'm just sitting there wasting t that kind of time during the day. Um, do you have anything more on that? No, I think I think that's, that's pretty much it. Like, I don't mind people who talk a lot. I like it better, at least if someone's friendly where – Instead of, you know, you feel like you're pulling a conversation mm -hmm. from them forcibly versus when they're very comfortably talking. But there are people who sometimes just go yeah, on long winded. And on. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's a good segue into this is something that I'm struggling with more so than I ever have just because of my progression as in my profession and then also being, you know, having a child. Um, you know, it's just the idea that my time managing i've always been a very good i've always been very good at time managing i still think that i am a lot better than most people but where my standards are and where i'm at always seems like i'm i'm lacking behind where i should be more efficient in my time and i think part of it we've talked about what i call my three hats meaning agent you know kind of um business developing growth of the of our actual company and then the third one being a lot of just my marketing and social media presence and things like that. To me, there are three full-time jobs that I'm cramming into a week because um, I could easily spend a full-time – a full week on all three of those jobs. Yeah. Um, so me, is like how, how do I, f I figure that out without burning myself out, without taking time away from my family, without having one of those kind of balls in the air falter? Like if I'm spending too much time – you know, on certain business aspects, am I lacking on generating business for our company? 
or if I'm spending too much time on meetings like networking meetings or developing with different people or referral partners, but it's taken away from my clients that I'm working with. It's a day to day struggle, you know, yeah. not getting messages returned. I'm still fairly quick at it, but <clears throat> not as quick as sometimes I would like. Now, granted, part of that is just the expectation I put on myself, not necessarily outside expectation. Yeah. But I also hold myself at a high standard and I try to, I try to hold myself and try to at least stay at that level or if, and, and always looking to improve. So have you had any, obviously you have a, you know, you're juggling full-time job with this, with mm -hmm. everything else in your life. And, um, time managing is obviously probably something that you, as I think with everybody struggle, I'm sure oh, yeah. there's times that you look in your day and it just, you think back with, Man, I really wasted the last half hour doing yep. whatever. Yeah. You know, so what what are what is your, kind of your cru crux on that on a day to day and then I'll kind of go into what my biggest negative would be cuz I got two of them. But what what are your biggest negative? I think we've touched about this on the, in the earlier podcast, but yeah. I think it now that you've been in a little bit longer, you know, even just a couple months in, you you probably perspective might change a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of curious as to what you think. Um, my biggest struggle is probably I have a very hard time getting out of bed and I want to get up at 4.30 every morning to go to the gym. Um, and I, I haven't done that in like two weeks. And I just... <laughs> and I just Does John know this? <laughs> he does. Okay. He, he was like, I can shake you awake if you want. Like if you want to lose a tooth. Uh, <laughs> put the air horn on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, I've gotten much better. I, I really like blocking out stuff. You know, block out time to sleep, block out time to read or take a shower um block out time to take the dog for a walk and planning stuff very carefully to make sure that i have enough time for everything the biggest thing i'm worried about going forward is having time you know especially right now with work um i've been do putting in probably f about 50 hours a week um in the office and it's half an hour away which is not convenient at all mm -hmm. um so i'm very concerned about looking going forward it's going to be tight trying to schedule showings when I'm in Keysville from 7.30 till 4.30 or 5. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I mean, I know I'll make it work, but that's going to be tight, yeah. I think, for a while. Well, I think I think the benefit, a couple of things, um, is a lot of people do look on the evenings and the weekends because a lot of times our job is when people are off, obviously. Yep. So yep. Um, that's why sometimes our hours are crazy. The other thing is the benefit of having a group of people that work with you is that you know, I've had you do this before for me and it's kind of the same thing. Reciprocate it back and say, Hey, listen, Thursday's the only night they can go. They need to go at three o'clock. I'm not out till four. Can you cover? And yeah. That's something we can do. You know, yeah. we'll make time. Um, so I think that that part of it, um, I think it, like I said, as you get busier, it's just, you know, we've talked about that transition hopefully over the next couple of years for you. Yeah. Um, and I think I've gotten to the, like, again, me, in my ninth year, um, it's just anything that I've brought on, I've brought on because of my own doing. And I think because of my, you know, success that I'm slowly trying to get to is that yeah. I just bring on more opportunities and bring on more all good. Like it's, I don't complain about any of it, yeah. but it does force me to try to be more efficient at stuff. And my biggest thing is the, the only bad part is I'm trying not to cut corners or not deliver at the same, at, again, my expectation or feel that I'm not delivering at a certain expectation. Now, if certain things have to take a back seat. Yes. Like certain recreational things have taken a back seat, which is fine. I, I'm, I like what I do. So I don't really look at like, you know, I, I used to golf a lot. That doesn't really happen anymore. I like, yeah. you know, hanging out with my friends. Well, now that I have a family, my big things that I try to prioritize is business, my family and, and health, like, fit, like yeah. physical, going to the gym out of the three, which one lacks the most is going to the gym. And that's something we've talked about and I struggle with, but mine, we talked about time blocking. Like I try to get to bed by 10. Yep. Um, because I got to wake up at four 45 if I want to go to the gym, which I try to do. But I mean, even my, my friends will laugh at me and say, you know, you, I try, but I, I'm, you know, my, my goal is to go to the gym three to five days a week if possible. Um, there's days like this week, I probably will go two, you yep. know, and, I, yep. and I, to be honest, today's Wednesday and I haven't gone at all. So I'm going to try to go tomorrow, Friday, and maybe Saturday if I can swing it and get three days in. And to me, it's more just kind of getting in, checking the box that I went, but it's a struggle for me because if I don't go to bed at 10, um, the other night I didn't get home till nine, yeah. you know, and I was eating dinner at like nine thirty. 
that sometimes happens. I'm not going to bed at 10. I went to bed at like 11, 1130. I'm not getting up on four to five hours of sleep and going to work out and yeah. spend the whole day, you know, kind of hustling and doing everything else. So it's just, it's, it's all choices that we make. Um, but that's probably my biggest thing. So I'm always trying to, you know, but opportunities happen during the day. I don't want to rush people during the day. Cause there's some, you know, I have some very good meetings. I have some very good, um, I meet with some very good people throughout the day that that maybe hour of my time is something I don't want to schedule them for 20 minutes to a half hour. Yeah. Even though I probably should schedule meetings half the time that I do just for, but you know, part, it depends. Like sometimes with us, I, I find that I know you a little bit better or some people I know a little bit better. I might rush the meeting a little quicker, not yeah. in a bad way, but we do, we kind of cut out the, the idle chit chat and try yeah. to hammer stuff out. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's always going to be um, an evolution as to how we, you know, I, I grow in that aspect, but that's been a struggle, but part of it's a learning curve, you know, yep. kind of stepping more into like a mentor leadership position is something I haven't done in a professional setting. Obviously I've, you know, I, I had to do that with um, coaching, you know, so I did that for eight years and that was something that I, I so I had the background in it, yeah. but it's just different. It's a different field. It's different age group. It's different type type of, um, you know, that's, it's all, it's all just stuff I'm learning, but I think time managing wise is just, I try, I'm definitely a yes person to a lot of things. Yep. I like taking on opportunities. I like challenging myself. I like growing. I like getting better, but at the same token with every yes comes more time yep. and you know, it's, it's just that balance and, and I've struggled with it. Um, I will hopefully get better yeah but i think that's just how life happens you know yep. especially when you have family and you're trying to build a company and you're trying to be successful and trying to you know improve my sales every year and and you know a lot of it is just my expectations every year get higher and level of of a uh level of air no you know what i mean level of um i don't miss miss not miss you know level not mis oh, mistake mis uh, Le yeah you know what i'm trying to say i do i do I don't air Level of error? That doesn't make error? sense. Error? Like making a mistake. Yeah, level of error. Is that it? It's like, it's yeah. not error though. It's too, there's two Level error. of, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know the term. If somebody's going to message me and be like, idiot, this is what you should have <laughs> said. But you know what I'm saying? Like the margin for error. Yes, there, <laughs> there you go. There we go. go. Sorry, that there was loud. Margin go. of error. <laughs> my margin of error is less because every year I'm like, I get, I get frightened looking at my numbers. Like, I don't know if I'm going to hit that. Like, I know yeah. I can. I know the potential to do it, but my my goal numbers every year at some point is going to be unattainable because I'm just going to end up maxing myself out either yeah. physically time wise or just straight up dollar amount. I can't. Yeah. We can only sell homes at a certain price point. So like at some point I'm going to, I'm going to end up not outselling myself from the year before, but I'm going to try like hell not to ever have that happen, which yeah. realistically I know I can't grow at the rate I, I set my goals at for my entire career. But Something to strive know. for. Yeah. You never know. If I do, that'd be pretty dope because I, I would uh, I'd probably break a lot of historic records, but we'll see. <laughs> um, Ellie, anything else that I got to run out to a showing? No. You got to run out to some dinner. other. <laughs> dinner. There you go. Yep. What, uh, what, uh, what else can we leave the listeners on episode nine? Anything? Any Spring good... is next week. So in theory, but on Wednesday, it will be warm. And it's, it, it is what five, a little after five right now. And it's still light out. Yeah. So I'm excited. This Thank is good God. because now we're going into the late night showings. I don't feel as bad because people can actually see the house. Exactly. So this is good. So spring's on its way. Um, Ellie is guaranteeing she's better than punk Satani Phil punk punk Satani, the, the gopher, the gro groundhog. Oh um, yeah. That gopher lied to us. So yeah, El Ellie's more, <laughs> more, more, uh, accurate than the gopher. So, um, for everybody that is, um, Ellie. And Galen. We're out. Episode 9. We will see you all next week. And we'll see you in the spring. Yep. We're out. <laughs>